Hey guys, it's Kaylee. We've been promising you some videos on serial killers. So, let's talk about one of the most notorious serial killers of all time, Vlad the Impaler, also the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. Vlad Dracul III was born in 1431 in Schauburg, Transylvania, to Vlad Dracul II and the Princess of Moldavia. His most notorious reign of the time lasted from 1456 to 1462. He also had two sons by two separate marriages. Dracula, Vlad Dracul III's Romanian name, or and as he was referred to in many documents, means son of the dragon, coming from, of course, Vlad Dracul II, his father, who had also joined the Order of the Dragon. Also, Dracula used to kill his enemies using impalement, which is a popular practice in medieval Transylvania, and was referred to as Kazwik Lu, which means the Impaler Prince. In the early years of his childhood, the future ruling prince had a very distinguished education. Among other things, he was taught combat skills, geography, mathematics, science, language, Romanian, Latin, Paleo-Slavic, classical arts, and philosophy. In 1436, Vlad's father, Dracul, ascended the throne of Wallachia. However, in 1442, he was ousted by rival factions in league with Hungary. In order to secure his return to the throne, he had to pay tribute to the Ottomans by sending his two younger sons, Vlad and his brother Radu, to the Ottoman court to serve as hostages, to show his loyalty. After being taken hostage, Vlad was kept in an underground prison, often being beaten, or whipped because of his stubborn and rude behavior. However, his younger brother Radu had caught the eye of the Sultan's son, Mehmed, and was allowed to attend the Ottoman court. These years had great influence on Vlad's character later in life and are also said to have spurred his hatred for his younger brother and also Mehmed, who would later become the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. In December of 1447, Vlad's father, Vlad Dracul II, and his eldest brother were both murdered by Hungarian regent John Hunyadi. The Ottomans then stepped in and put young Vlad on the Wallachian throne. However, this was very short-lived, and he was forced to flee to Moldavia, the home of his mother, to stay under the protection of his uncle, Bogdan II. Unfortunately, Bogdan was assassinated in 1451, and Vlad was forced to flee again, this time to Hungary. After a short period of time, John Hunyadi actually decided to reconcile with Vlad and made him his royal advisor. In 1456, Three years after the Ottomans had overtaken Constantinople, they decided to threaten Hungary by besieging Belgrade. So, John Hunyadi led a contingent into Serbia as a counterattack, relieving the siege there, but then he died of plague. However, Vlad led his own contingent into his homeland of Wallachia, reconquering it and also killing the then ruler Vladislav II in hand to hand combat. Unfortunately, Vlad found Wallachia in a wretched state. The constant overhang of war had led to rampant crime, falling agricultural production, and also almost the complete disappearance of trade. He was forced to resort to many severe methods in order to restore prosperity and order. Since Wallachian nobility was also linked to Transylvanian Saxons, Vlad was on guard against them and worked to eliminate their trade and also raided their cities. In fact, in 1459, he had several Saxon settlers impaled. Vlad was also on guard against members of the Dynasty clan, and it is said that several of these raids in Transylvania were used to capture potential enemies. Also, it is said that a prince of the Dynasty clan had something to do with his brother's murder. So, Vlad ordered the death of this prince and had him kneel before an open grade, grave and read his own eulogy. Several members of the clan died at Vlad's hands and citizens of the prince himself, who Vlad had impaled. In 1462, Vlad devastated the area between Serbia and the Black Sea. He quoted his campaign describing it as, I have killed men and women, old and young, 23,884 Turks and Bulgarians, not counting those whom we have burned alive in their homes or whose heads have been chopped off by our soldiers. In result to this, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Mehmed, raised an army of 60,000 soldiers to march on Wallachia against Vlad. Unable to stop the Turks, Vlad and his soldiers were forced to resort to guerrilla warfare. One of their most famous campaigns happened in June of that year, when they entered one of the Turkish camps in an attempt to assassinate Mehmed. The Ottomans eventually left Wallachia, leaving Vlad's younger half-brother Radu the Handsome in charge of the warfare there. Radu then struck a deal with Matthias 
to have Vlad imprisoned and leave himself supreme ruler of Wallachia. Join me in a future video when we'll discuss how a psychiatrist killed an elephant by feeding him too much LSD. That and other trippy facts about acid. Tune in next time as we finish our discussion on Vlad the Impaler. This is where it gets ugly. Bring your vomit bag. Now I don't want to, uh, it sounded bad, I want to do it again. That's not what I was thinking about. <laughs> okay. And, and his eldest brother were both mar mar married. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining me today on our discussion on Vlad the Impaler. Please rate my video, leave me any comments that you'd like, and don't forget to subscribe.